Welcome to On The Record with Chloe B, where I invite celebrities on to tell their truth behind the headlines. You can listen every Monday at 6pm on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. So I'm joined with my lovely friend, Sophia. Hello, my darling. Thank <laughs> you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you here. So I feel like normally with On The Record, I invite people in, I talk them through newspaper articles that have been wrote about them and they sit there and say, this isn't necessarily true. And maybe sometimes I feel like with the press, it does get a bit of a bad rap. So obviously what I wanted to speak through with you is how much of a positive impact the press has had on you and your life and the things that you've been through. So I feel like probably everyone watching knows who you are anyway. And if you don't, <laughs> today you will. If you don't. So tell us a little bit about you before you were sort of catapulted into sort of the press and fame. Tell us about that. Um, hello and thank you for having me, Chloe. <laughs> um, I don't know where to start really with in terms of what and who I was before maybe my character is completely different to who I am now mm -hmm. my purpose my direction my life has changed massively after mm -hmm. the journey that I've gone through however my personality and who I was before I was carefree I was relaxed I was enjoying life I was enjoying enjoying the motives of a relationship um, my work life which so yeah what did you do before yeah, so before I did aesthetics. Oh, did you? Yeah, so I was an injector, which yeah. I absolutely loved. It was my passion. Mm -hmm. I love making women feel good and men as well, mm -hmm. even though the men are a little bit cheeky and like to do it behind closed doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. It's so funny, actually. I was speaking to my friend. I was like, oh, my God, like men are starting to get lip fillers. And she was like, Chloe, that's been going on for it's years. It's been going on for years. And do you know what's so incredible about that as well is the fact that People are more accepting in society now, yeah. and I just really love the fact that people can feel more comfortable to speak about it, because my clients that I'd had before, it would be to the point where they'd be having anti-wrinkle, and it'd be like, I'd be treating them and their wife, and yeah. I'm like, obviously through confidentiality, I can't tell oh, the wife so that funny. the husband's having it, but yeah. so you're like kind of piggy in the middle there. Yeah. I wanted to take a moment to mention, I get so many compliments and questions about my teeth. I had composite bonding at the lovely tooth club. They have offers on each month and you can pay monthly. They're based all over Essex, Hertfordshire and Kent. So many of the team from Towie and Love Island have been there. Check them out on Instagram, Tooth Club UK, and don't forget to mention Chloe 10 for an extra discount. Thank you to the Tooth Club UK for being my official sponsors of On The Record with Chloe B. But it was just really, really lovely to have a job that I loved, that I had a passion for, mm -hmm. making people feel good, making sure that they felt comfortable and confident in the work that I was giving to them. So I was always um, very, I always like to do a job mm -hmm. where it's wholesome. Yeah. Um, and I just really enjoyed doing it. And um, for me, it was about always striving to be a better person. Mm -hmm. Or I came from a background where, um, from when I was younger where we had we didn't have mm -hmm. and I watched my mom work very hard to mm -hmm. get to where she has today mm -hmm. so I was always taught to be self-sufficient yeah um a person that didn't rely on somebody um a woman that stood on her own two feet and watched my mom have four jobs to get back to where she is today so mm -hmm. it was installed in me as a child um, to always make sure that I get up and I go and I work. So mm -hmm. I, I've had a really resilient um, background mm -hmm. in terms of growing up as well and my childhood. I didn't have, I never knew any different to mm -hmm. a certain age, but I was in an environment which I shouldn't have been in an environment, which it was, no, I should have had a better childhood should I say mm -hmm. uh, my mum did her best and I'm forever grateful to my mum and her showing me the characteristics that I should have through life yeah she really showed me strength um, and that's allowed me to pull myself to where I am through school I was a little bit of a rebel can't yeah. lie. <laughs> um, I was mischievous and I really feel like that was from the childhood of me growing up mm -hmm. I felt like um my mum was incredible, my family was incredible. Unfortunately, I didn't have the right father figure in my life. Not me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Until my stepdad came along. Yeah. Um, and he took that role really gently and yeah. just like really merged himself in softly. So it was really beautiful to think that, okay, all that hardship that I had growing up mm -hmm. has moulded me into the woman mm -hmm. that I am today. Yeah. And the woman that I was 
and through my journey with Azalea, mm. I really feel like that strength come from being younger yeah. and having that mindset of no matter how times are, no matter how shit they are, mm. you know what, we get back up and we keep going. I used to do a paper round with my brother, my oh. mom, <laughs> to keep the sky on when yeah. we was younger because you can still have these things in life. Yeah. It's just how hard are we wor- willing to work for them yeah. to get where we want to be. So did you ever see yourself like, you know, obviously now you're very recognisable and people know who you are. I, w- I, w- I wouldn't even want to call you an influencer because I think you're so much more than that. But did you ever see yourself being in the public eye? Did you ever want fame? You know, a lot of people want to go on Love Island, want to do this. Did you ever want that? To me, it was more a case of, when I was younger, I wanted to be a pop star. Oh, I did think you? Every I think everyone girl, did. Yeah. I think every girl wanted to be a pop star. Yeah. So if I say, yes, I did, it yeah. was because I wanted to be in a girl band. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Always performing, got yeah. a brush in front of my face, yeah. singing in front of the mirror. Yeah. So when I say in terms of, yes, I wanted that, I wanted it in the fact that I wanted to be a pop star in a girl band. Yeah, of course. Or the fact that I went into drama and I wanted to be on um, Coronation Street. Yeah, my family course. are actually from Manchester yeah. on my mum's side. So when I was younger, I got took to, I got sent to Manchester by my choice yeah. uh, to stay at my auntie's house to then go on to Coronation Street and think, would I like it? Could I be in Manchester? Oh, my God. I, I cried that. after the first day. <laughs> <laughs> my mum had to come and pick me up. Yeah. So that dream never happened. Yeah. So for me, it was more in the way of career yeah. in the reason why I would have wanted to be in the public eye, to be recognised for having a talent of singing or acting. Yeah, of yeah. course. So, obviously, you then entered into a relationship with Ashley. So, he's recognisable in the press, you know, he's been on TV shows. When you started dating, did you sort of become someone that was known or was you quite, like, in the background? Like, you know, some people that have, like, a public relationship and automatically just become an influencer because their boyfriend is. How was it when you first got together? So, mine and Ashley's relationship was always been a friend, was always a friendship. Okay. So, we was friends for 10 years before. Not close friends, but we was kind of around the same crowd. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, my friends were doing certain modelling mm-hmm. um, and um, I had friends that are in the industry, mm-hmm. but I was never recognised in the industry. I had friends in the industry. So, we all had... It's kind of really crazy because you look at it from a public perspective and you think, oh, my God, that industry is so huge. Oh, when it's fact not. It's no, tiny. it's tiny. Yeah. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. So, I kind of had friends that was merged into different things. So, we kind of just had the same friends. But... Um, mine and his relationship was very much private Mm -hmm. um, and I think he wanted to keep it private because he'd had public um, relationships before where Mm -hmm. they probably wasn't the soul and the purpose behind who he was as a character and what he was looking for as a future Mm -hmm. Um, him knowing me I don't know what he did. I think he uh, he put something in my drink that night. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, joking. Joking. Like, yeah, joking. I'm joking. Like, disclaimer. Um, but we had a friendship. So we was always out with mutual friends. So like a girl group and the guys. Mm-hmm. And we'd just be out having food, going to different events. So we kind of merged together. And then we ended up like unfolding into a relationship. Mm-hmm. But it was... We were so in our own bubble mm-hmm. that I I actually felt at one point, and, like, I think every girl has gone through this, you know, like, when you're seeing a guy, it wasn't because he was in the public eye of why I wanted him to be like, hey, like, you've got a girlfriend over yeah, here. Yeah, of course. It was more the case of I had to understand where he was coming from. Mm-hmm. He had me there, and I was his future of mm-hmm. him realizing okay I want to be with you I want to start a family with you you are precious to me Mm -hmm. I want to keep you here I think that makes perfect sense I think it's hard though for people because it's like oh what's she a secret it's just not the case at all I think it's like when you've got something that's so good I feel like often when it comes into the public eye it can cause negative problems like even the smallest of things like women messaging you like well he was on a night out the other day and it's like well I know that actually I feel like people when they see something good they're intent on breaking it down so I can fully understand why Ashley probably decided to keep you out of that yeah he wanted to keep it private and me not understanding yeah. makes you feel like oh, you, think, you oh, question I'm yourself you're thinking it. oh okay so like what am I not good enough am I not pretty enough am I not this am I not that but really taking a step back and really listening to him and understanding and appreciating the fact that okay if it's if you're out there 
there's so much that can happen, like you just said. Yeah. But he, I respected what he wanted. That's his career and his life. And it's like, it's not for me to come in and just disrupt that. Mm -hmm. So I took what he said on board and we was sailing. Mm -hmm. We were sailing through. And then when did you sort of come out as his girlfriend? Then was it after you had the baby? When, um, no, actually, he posted me a few times. Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> uh, he he did it. Yeah, yeah, he did. I made it to the grid. <laughs> After a few years. No, like, we went on holiday. So we had, like, a few holidays together. Yeah. So then he'd post um, us on holiday. Um, or just, like, different things that would come along, you know, like, he'd post. And, um, and then it was the big one of us revealing that um we was having azalea basically oh, oh that's yeah so, that's so that was really really nice and then it was just like oh my god you got a girlfriend who is she who's girl yeah <laughs> I it like two years ago <laughs> <laughs> i've been here ages actually yeah, yeah just just here uh, like cooking dinner cleaning the house you know <laughs> so obviously with azalea so obviously you had the baby everything was fine and then mm -hmm. when did you like notice that, that like she was unwell yeah so basically we we Ashley wanted for us to have a baby for a long time. Mm -hmm. I think it was my reservations through growing up without a dad mm -hmm. of really wanting to make sure I was 30. Mm -hmm. So I'm really making sure that like who I choose to have a child with mm -hmm. is the right person. Yeah. Um, so when we, I decided in the end, okay, like I can see this has changed, this has changed. It's my yeah. tick list is yeah. being ticked. The You've guy's made out him perfect. there. He's perfect. Yeah, perfect. yeah. Like I've uh, really, he wanted to do it because he wanted to do it as yeah. well. And I was never in in the way where me and Ashley would be, where I'd be like, right, if you don't do this, then I'm leaving. No, of course. Listen, it's yeah. got to come from somebody's heart. People and have want. got, to, they've got to want to change, otherwise they're never going to be that Absolutely. person. And I feel like, you know, you think they've changed, and a couple months later, they're back to their old ways. Yeah. You need to make sure they're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, and, and he really did. And that took a little bit of time for it to like really sink in that, okay, like this is my future. This guy's really being serious. Mm -hmm. I've known him for so long to the point where it's like, okay, we're going to have Azalea. Mm -hmm. Um, Azalea was born and like truly welcomed into this world with abundance of love. When I say their families, like everyone, you're very was close so to Ashley's family, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, really close. Like we are, we we will always remain and bond. We'll get to that later. Yeah, but like yeah, we're so close. Um, and it's just so beautiful. Um, my family, his family, we was all wrapped, and everyone was just super excited to meet Azalea. Mm. Um, she was a celebrity before she was even born. <laughs> <laughs> um, within our family, I yeah. mean by that. And um, yeah, Azalea was born, and six weeks later, I took her to the doctors. Um, I'd noticed there was a bruise as I did a nappy and the inside of a groin, mm -hmm. which was because um, I do aesthetics. Yeah. I know that if there's a lump behind a bruise, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. So through me having background work knowledge, yeah. I felt this bruise mm -hmm. and it was lump behind it. Mm -hmm. So fast forwarding, I've kind of fast forwarded quite a lot of that because so many people already know our journey. But looking at the symptoms, there was cold type symptoms. Mm -hmm. There was bruising, mottling on the skin. Um, she was bunged up. Um, they told us that she'd got thrush, so we was giving her drops up for her tongue. Mm -hmm. um, her eyes were all scrunched up. Um, yeah. She couldn't have cowpaw because she can't have cowpaw before certain, like before six weeks, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they weren't giving her cowpaw. We just really had to try. Yeah. And then um, at six weeks, I took her in to yeah. the doctors that basically said, yeah, she's okay, she's okay. Mm. It's just she's a baby. Two weeks later, we were catapulted into A&E, &E, mm. um, being told that your daughter has now got leukaemia. And that's where our lives just changed. Yeah. yeah. And what made you decide to, to tell everyone about it? So was it a decision? I think people just think you know sharing that it's not an easy decision in any way so what was your thought process behind wanting to share what was going on yeah so that's really good that you asked that because we've we've never been asked that question yeah. I don't think <laughs> um but me and Ashley actually sat and had a conversation yeah. and um because everything was so loud and so quick obviously you've still got work yeah so his phone was going 100 miles an hour with work commitments um 
and he said like oh I need to post this to just so everyone could just leave me alone of course. um so they kind of know what's going on when he said that to me I was just like whoa like yeah like no 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 you probably I'm haven't even posted it yourself let not alone either. letting how I don't know how many followers I actually had at the time but letting all these people know that what you're going through you haven't even posted it yourself yeah I think it was me hiding at first and I said no like I'm not sure about that to me I felt like we were going to be in hospital and we're going to come out and then maybe you can say something but like right now we're just in hospital you don't need to say anything yeah. however when he was um, explaining he wanted to say something. He hasn't got the time, the capacity. Work people need to find out. Mm-hmm. I had to like put myself in his position and just mm-hmm. think, okay, like, yeah, I understand. So that's when the I think news. It's quite selfless what you did, to be honest. The fact that you posted it, it was, it was really selfless because you're letting people know what you're going through before you've even posted it yourself. Yeah, and, and I, I think it was just, it was more the case, really, uh, the reason for the initial announcement to kind of be like, guys this is what's happening to me right now. Yeah. I know you're all going to read it rather than me messaging individual people. Yeah. Here you go. So if you're not getting a response, it's because I'm going through this. Yeah. So that was and when did you notice like, like the, I don't really know how, what word to use, but when did you notice like people really like was following what was going on with you guys? Cause I just remember just seeing it constantly. I was checking updates and I didn't know you. Like I yeah. feel like you got the whole of the, of the UK or a lot of countries behind you because people were so interested in what was going on and so genuinely concerned about Azalea. When did you feel like that sort of happened? I feel like the flip switch for me was, um, I'll tell you something, I get asked this and it were it was, why did you share your journey so publicly? Mm-hmm. So remember at that time I probably had about 4,000 followers. Mm-hmm. When I sh- when I decided to share it mm-hmm. was people get to share their child. <sighs> Go oh, in you make me cry <laughs> every time I speak to you. You <laughs> make me cry. So people get to share their child in a way where they're at the park, um, they're they're having their first. Uh, piece of fruit they're doing something they're doing an activity or something for me it was I don't have that option to do that yeah I'm also a new mom I'm in hospital at eight weeks yeah I'm so proud of my daughter so I was sharing Azalea because before me going into hospital I was still doing that on my social so it's just what any normal person does people take pictures of their food and post it online so I was sharing Azalea with my family my friends people that know me Mm -hmm. on my Instagram of just me being a mom yeah but unfortunately I'm having to be a mom in an oncology way Mm -hmm. but what happened was more people were obviously then noticing that oh this is the mom this Mm -hmm. is the mom But I was still carrying on doing what I was doing Mm -hmm. from the start. So nothing actually changed You didn't change in any way. You just continued. I didn't mould into, oh, I'm now getting followers. Are they going to want to see this? No, this is like me just doing my thing. Mm -hmm. When then following came, when the following came through and when I actually Mm recognised, wow, we have got an incredible community behind us, was when we was looking for a bone marrow transplant for Azalea. Yeah. Um, We got the news that Azalea's heritage, um, because of mine and Ashley's background, Mm -hmm. was going to be basically, they didn't have a donor to Mm -hmm. match for Azalea. Mm -hmm. So they're telling us that we need to do an outreach. So we knew that, okay, like we need to put that out there. Mm -hmm. When... We heard the numbers come in at over 80,000 people in one weekend so signed amazing. up to become a donor yeah. for Azalea. That's when I suddenly felt the tightness of the nation. Yeah. You know when you don't feel like there's really humanity left anymore? No, I feel like what was going on with Azalea and, and the, the pull you guys had, yeah. I think it shows how much people... People were so interested. I cried. Like, yeah. I, I think everyone was so involved because everyone saw it before. <laughs> Why am I crying? <laughs> I think like, everyone saw it from the start, you yeah. know, and yeah, everyone was very uh, yeah invested. supportive. And I just felt like such, we got such, that's when I felt it. That's when I thought, 
oh shit, we have the most incredible, who are these people? First yeah. in my head, I was thinking, oh my gosh, we are literally outreaching for a second chance for Azalea's life, her heritage, her background. We're literally having meetings with different consultants and people yeah. coming in saying we might not be able to get a match. Mm -hmm. That was like the most terrifying thing. The fact that we went online to say, guys, you literally need to, you get a swab sent to you. You literally take a swab in the inside of your mouth. You put it in this kit. Mm. You put it in an envelope and post it. The fact that over 80,000 people in one weekend sent that back to Anthony Nolan and DKMS was just phenomenal. Yeah. That not only gives Azalea a second chance at life, but over 80,000 people that signed up gave another person another chance at life. And also, I think as well, like you speaking about the symptoms and stuff, like I've got to be honest, I would have no idea about these symptoms. Yeah. If you had people reach out to you and say, because you named these symptoms, I found out that my child had it. I've had the most horrendous messages that I could possibly read. When I say horrendous, I mean it by soul destroying. Yeah. The fact that these people have read cried and worried and because of the awareness about Azalea's journey has actually made them double question their GP yeah to the point where that child has been diagnosed that's amazing um so yeah it is and you know with the press and stuff I feel like it often gets a really negative sort of you know review what did the press do for you and Ashley when you was going through these sort of things? I picked up on some articles that people had wrote and stuff, and they was always really lovely, and they was literally just picking up on everything you guys did. Did they like put the links to the GoFundMe's and stuff for you as well? Um, that I don't know because I wasn't. I bet you weren't even. I checking. wasn't even checking. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I and I think that's why I felt so supported. Yeah. Um, when the when the national press got involved with our journey, that's when I thought okay, we're good on this journey, mm -hmm. like, everybody knows, the press are behind it, and, mm -hmm. like, don't get me wrong, I also read, like, the press, you know, tearing different situations down, and the fact that the press were behind us in such a great, impactful way, yeah. they really, really catapulted, um, we had ITV that actually came to um, the hospital to interview me and Ashley for our pledge yeah. for people on the bone marrow to get them on the bone marrow to give Azalea a second it's chance. Amazing. The fact that they came in in COVID, obviously there was lots of restrictions and what we had to do, mm. but they were so supportive and so kind to us. That is amazing. Yeah. On the record with Chloe B is exclusively sponsored by the Tooth Club UK. Make sure you check them out as they've got clinics all over Essex, Hertfordshire and Kent. Check them out on Instagram, the Tooth Club UK, and don't forget to mention Chloe 10 for an extra discount. You know, with your journey and sharing Azalea's sort of journey, was there anything that you ever questioned posting? Was there anything that ever made you think, I don't think I should be posting this? Um, good question, Chloe. <laughs> um, let me think. Towards the end of Azalea's life on Earth, um, because we are so proud as parents yeah. of every obstacle she was getting through, even on days where she was tired or she'd had loads of chemotherapy that wiped all of her blood cells out. Mm -hmm. She was still smiling. Yeah. She was still smiling. I think it's that it's because of why she won the nation. Everybody knew as an adult yeah. what she was going through. Oh my God, yeah. But that little girl, she was up smiling through the most intense chemotherapy. Yeah. And... I think because we was used to sharing, it got to that point where we've been sent home on end of life. But because we've been sent home at end of life, we got told that maybe she'd only had that day left to live. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was kind of like we were still posting and sharing yeah. because we're like, oh, my God, look at her. Like, they're, yeah. they're wrong again. There's yeah. something still inside you as a parent where you don't want to accept. You yeah. don't want to believe what is going to happen in front of you we got sent home they're telling us that she won't be able to eat yeah then she's got a little green bean she actually got <laughs> the, the press actually picked this one up she had a green bean in her hand yeah and like she was eating it and like waving it around yeah and then it was like as soon as we were singing like ooby do i want to be like you because that's what she loved to, yeah. to sing she was just like 
so joyful, but at certain points, the fluid was getting too much for her. Mm -hmm. When the body shuts down, fluid starts building up in the body because we have nowhere to for the system to be working to the point where she couldn't open her eyes and she'd have her dummy in her hand and she'd like to, she'd always be sucking on her dummy yeah. but to the point where her mouth was too sore. She could no longer have a dummy so she'd just hold, I'd put her dummy in her hand and just let her hold it knowing she's got her dummy. Yeah. Then it was to the point where I'd actually have a conversation with Ashley and say, do you think that we should stop posting now? Yeah. That felt difficult for both of us to say yes yeah. because we always had belief. Yeah. So the moment we're like, we need to stop, that's when you think you have, it, it, it's done. Yeah. It, it's done. Like, why are we not posting anymore? It's like, we're giving, we've got hope, we've got fuel, we've got belief in us. So we're posting, we're posting like, yeah, this is happening, but look how far we've come in. We've, we've been told that we haven't got a bone marrow transplant, but look, we found one. Yeah. She got told that all the ag- ads were against her, but look, yeah. she's beat it. So we was always in that whole kind of cycle to that point where it was like she was laying there. Um, she wasn't functioning. She wasn't, you know, we just knew, guys, like, that's it. Yeah. We can't share anymore it was to the point where we needed that time as parents to understand that we've lost this battle yeah even though we've been told but we've been told six months before that yeah this is going to happen she might not get through round one of chemotherapy she might not be with us after round one of chemotherapy but she smashed it yeah so it's like okay. how do we now stop now yeah. you don't yeah. you don't want to admit to yeah stop. that felt like us giving up yeah. Once we knew that we had to put it down, it was like, it's beat us. And when you announced her passing, I, I can't even imagine doing that, to, yeah. to be honest. Like, you're dealing with the mourning of your daughter, and then now the nation is, because I feel like the nation, like, lost her too, you yeah. know? And I feel like when people approach you in the street, like, I've been with you. <clears throat> God. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know what, Chloe? This is this is realness, though. Do you know, like, and to see you like this is something that is the reason why I'm so connected to each person in our community, so connected to you, seeing the love, seeing the support, seeing the real, true emotion and the feeling behind each yeah. person. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's, 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 I just remember like following it every day, you know. Yeah. I didn't even know you at the time. Yeah. So like I feel like everyone felt like this, you know, yeah. for her. Um but when I've been out with you and I see people come over to you, I find it really hard to watch sometimes. Like as a friend of yours, like, you know, for example, we was out and we was at like a Halloween scare fest and we've been running around. I've been crying because I was in a maze, you know, and you've been <laughs> like, It's fine, you'll be fine and then someone's come up to you and, and, and they immediately bring up Azalea. Did you find that so hard to have people just bringing her up constantly? It was kind of like a love and hate thing. Yeah. Um, because now, at, well, at that particular moment, I'm trying to um, enjoy time with my friends. Yeah. I'm trying to just escape for a moment. Yeah. And just have some kind of normality and fun and enjoyment with my friends just for a period of time, just a moment in that day. And then it's... Somebody wants to come over. Yeah. And, like, and it's I'm always so out of kindness. Always. Out of kindness. And and I'm always so touched by any person that comes up to me. And that's why I take that time. But it just suddenly clicks Yeah, for me of my reality. So it's just a pinch back again. Like, just think, oh, I like, took so much time in my own energy and my mindset to come out with my friends, to get ready to come out, to just kind of put a blocker on what's actually really happening and what I'm dealing with on a day-to-day basis. And then it's kind of just like a, woof, you've just pulled me out of that bubble for a second. I appreciate you and I love the support that you've given me for it. But it is is difficult because then it makes me upset. Then I have to put my head back in the fun mode of where I've just left off from. So that's something that I've had to really tailor myself to. Yeah, Yeah. and obviously... After Azalea passed, I, I was looking online about articles and obviously, like, the press photograph the funeral 
Was you aware? Azalea's dad. Was That's you, what I call oh, it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine. So the press photographed Azalea's dad. Yeah. Did you know that they was going to be there? I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I can honestly say I wasn't even... Um, my mind wasn't even there. Yeah. Like, I just... I didn't... I was, I was just being a mother and sorting out her daughter's day. Yeah, of course. And the fact that the press did turn up and they were there and they captured so much of it, it was because of the heart and the love behind the press. Yeah. Of the reason why there was there. Of course. And I look at it, I look at it like that. Um, I think as well, I think because you give so much of her to everybody and you yeah. wanted everyone, everyone was so involved in her story and everyone felt like they knew her. Yeah. I feel like when that day happened, the people sort of around felt in a way like they was entitled to, to see Absolutely. it and be there. Yeah. And I feel like often it's seen as a negative, like they, they photographed as alias day, but it's not, I, I saw it in a different way actually. I actually saw it in a way where, the whole of the, the nation was so invested in Azalea yeah. that they wanted to see that. But then again, I can see in a way where I find it quite disrespectful because you're a mother grieving. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a really, really, like, really funny one there because I think because all I felt was love and support through the whole journey, through each individual, through the community, the monuments that were lighting up around the world, we had, like, Niagara Falls lighting up orange, we had... Like, Where did the orange come from? Um, so orange actually stands for leukemia. That's the colour of leukemia. Oh, okay. So that's why we had the colour orange. Orange for Azalea. Yeah. I remember. So, yeah. <laughs> but like the day with the press come in there, you're so numb, you don't you don't know what's going on. But we knew that there's going to be a lot of people. Like people were sending us messages like, what's can, can we show our respect? Can we show our respect? And... And listen, we wanted everybody there. We wanted everybody. You just tried to help save our daughter's life. Of course. Within three hours, Azalea had raised over £1 million. And that's because of all of them people that was stood from my house down to we had a cut-off point where then we didn't say where we were going after. We had a whole walk for miles. And the streets and the pavements were chock a block. We had people from Scotland, from Devon, like from literally Lands End to John O'Groats, people just coming to flood in the streets of Nuneaton. And when we was walking down behind Azalea's carriage, the abundance of love. We had um, people with lion balloons, people singing Ooby Doo, yeah. people... Um, literally just waving Azalea's pictures and it was out like a moment which I was so much in pain following my daughter's casket at the same time as feeling the love it was just unreal so I've got an article I wanted to talk to you about here so obviously the things you've done prior to Azalea passing is obviously amazing. So it says here that you leave your comfort zone to collect toys for child cancer patients. Mm -hmm. So obviously, me and you went out for breakfast a few months ago, and I remember speaking to you about things that I hadn't even realised. Like, I think it's hard because you're never in someone else's brain, so I hadn't realised that when I was speaking to you and I got upset when I was speaking to you over breakfast, you were saying how you find so many small things triggering. Mm -hmm. So obviously that article... I could understand why. So could you just elaborate on a little bit about like the comfort zone and how you find like things like prams and stuff like that? I, yeah, I was like I was I was telling my mum like I was saying how hard it was. I just can't imagine. Do you mean like by triggers? Like yeah. what triggers me? Yeah. So when we was having breakfast that day, um, it was there was just somebody within eyesight of having their pram there, taking the baby out. But although I'm there having breakfast with you. I can also see my surroundings. So seeing push chairs, seeing babies coming out of the push chairs is kind of just like I kind of block it out, but that's a trigger. Yeah. Also hearing people talking about baby showers, um, or seeing pregnant women, or going into supermarkets and seeing the baby oil, mm. hearing the news of somebody having a child is just massive massive triggers Mm -hmm. um because not only is it that 
it's also the future mm-hmm. of looking at um, when I go into schools, I go to do wear orange for azalea. Yeah, no, and that's what, so obviously that was that question. So the fact is that you see these triggers every single day. Absolutely. And most people would run from them. Yeah. To be quite honest with you, I would. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think I could face doing it. That's why you're such a strong person. But you choose to go into schools and hospitals. Mm. What was it that made you do that? It was my pain. I sat there. Um, it was actually because of the Azalea Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, if we didn't have Azalea's Foundation, like, I don't know where I'd be. Mm-hmm. Like, that is where I just execute so much pain and turn it into purpose. Mm-hmm. And Ashley obviously does incredible challenges, raises so much awareness in what he's doing. Um, I actually had a conversation with him to say, like, I don't know what my purpose is. I was yeah. then, like thinking like what is my purpose like oh my god like I need to earn my place with Azalea what's my purpose like Ashley's got his he's like it will come to you just give it time it will come to you um, and then I actually sat there on the sofa this one day had like the most depressive day ever mm. I was literally had a blanket around me I was crying and I was thinking what am I going to do yeah it was at then when I realized I need to turn my pain into purpose. What is my biggest pain? My biggest pain is children. My biggest pain is babies. I should be going into schools with Azalea. My future's been robbed of me. Um, my future's now not what I was meant to be doing. Yeah. So children's a trigger. Mm-hmm. I need to do something with children. Okay, I was meant to be going into schools and going to parents' evenings and doing all the things with Azalea. Schools. So I merged them together and I thought, non-uniform day at school. I saw that orange for Azalea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then I thought, okay, I went and put this to my CEO to say, I have to do this. Like, I've been looking for my purpose, pain into purpose. This is my idea. Yeah. And then it evolved into wear orange for Azalea, which is on its second year now. And we relaunched it this year on um, Good Morning Britain with, uh, Fern Cotton. That's so, amazing. Yeah, we're, do, we're doing really well with it. And when you go into schools, what is it that you talk about when you go into them? So going into schools, it's not talking about cancer. Cancer okay. is not something that I go into schools and talk about. Mm-hmm. It was then looking at the narrative and what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So we as a foundation came up with a narrative of let's have dual purpose for this. Mm-hmm. We go into the schools and talk about kindness, mutual support and inclusivity um, and do assemblies and have a day of fun where they're using colour to express themselves. They're being kind, inclusive and doing an assembly to talk about supporting one another. If somebody's candles out and yours is a light, go and take your light over and light their candle back up and yeah. give them light again. Yeah. Share your light when people are feeling dark. So it was kind of giving them that message at the same time as giving the message to teachers and the parents of the reason why we're doing that. Mm-hmm. Giving them the insight that childhood cancer is the biggest killer of children in UK and it receives less than 3% of funding from the government, mm-hmm. which is why we're doing what we're doing. That we are, yeah. So another one I wanted to ask you about, which I found really interesting. Obviously, I've been around you a lot. Um, so it says here, Sophia reveals vile message troll sent as she mourned her daughter. So... I find that absolutely ludicrous that you get trolling. But obviously when I spoke to you as well, like I feel like it's like grief has so many faces and they expect you to be crying in bed all day long. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to speak to you a little bit about that. So do you receive bad messages? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really happy that you've touched on that because I don't think that I've had one interview that actually touches on the severity of this. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really, really good that you asked me this. So thank you for that. Because I'm I'm always trying to figure out how do I speak about it? Do I speak about it? Do I just keep it to myself? Do I just share it with friends yeah. and, and like kind of conversate with um, mutual things of them getting trolled and mm-hmm. just kind of sharing it between somebody that understands the effects that trolling has. And because I'd only receive nothing but love and warmth and comfort yeah from media from individuals to then start receiving hateful speech um bullying and when did you feel like you started getting that we started getting that when we set up azalea's foundation okay. um but how i don't yeah yeah how? so basically because we'd raised so much funds through the gofundme mm-hmm. 
so many people um, was so incredibly touched that we was actually then updating the GoFundMe to say, with these funds, we are now putting it into the Azalea Foundation to help other children and families yeah. fight against childhood cancer. Yeah. So that was our first initial thing of what we thought, we need to help people. Yeah. Me and Ashley are not, we don't understand charities and whatever so we just knew that we needed to help yeah of course a very very small minority thought that coming on social media to say that we have spent the money we have took the money we oh look at this um outfit she's wearing you've used the gofundme to fund that it's ridiculous these kind of things at first actually took me by surprise because yeah. I just thought, yeah, mm. like, wh- wh- what, do they, what do they mean? And also with a GoFundMe, you actually have a window after the GoFundMe is no ne- not needed to actually withdraw your funds. Mm-hmm. Um, so you do have the ability to take your donation back. So they have got that access that we work closely with GoFundMe now. And to know that people were coming on to troll initially about the funds was something that absolutely made my heart catapult to think like, oh my God, but I haven't. Like, yeah. do you know, to the point where you actually want to screenshot everything and, be like, and put it yeah. out to prove a point to say, oh my God, like, of course we're not. Like, like we've just walked through these shoes. Like, I, I don't want a penny no. of any of this. Of course. And do you feel like even now, for example, like I see you, you look beautiful right now. Do you feel like people sit there and say, she doesn't look like she's grieving? Do you think people yeah, say that? Yeah, Karen, like, that is, like, the worst thing, like, to to actually use somebody's visual and assume that that person is okay because they've pulled themselves together that day. You've seen them at an event or you've seen them somewhere. Even today, coming on, you think, oh, okay, she looks, oh, like... God, look at her, like, she's lost her child, she's gone through that, she's done this, the relationship's broke down, all this has gone on, look at her there. It's just like, do you think that that disappears? No, Do you think not. that um, wearing different faces each day is something that you have to do to continue here? Absolutely. I spent months and months on the sofa, mm. eating, eating and eating I was like a size six to eight after I had azalea I was like a 10 medium 10 after I lost azalea I don't even know I just used to wear stretchy stuff (laughs) because I was sitting there eating and grieving it's the last thing on your mind is it what size you are do you know what I mean yeah but like the trolls made it to that point though do you know they were literally bullying me online for my appearance and I'm like I'm grieving I'm now being attacked for you've used that money to spend so and so, which I need to clarify, which I shouldn't have to do. That every last penny, apart from Azalea's day, went straight into the foundation. And the most insane thing is the fact that somebody would use their own mindset. Yeah. On is that because that's what you would do? So you're basing your opinion on something that you would do yeah not what uh, two parents have just walked through how yeah and they are turning pain into purpose by trying to help the other children and families and being trolled through gaining weight and um gaining gaining weight yeah that was a massive thing because my relationship was also breaking down at that point yeah so I was speaking to you about that as well so when you split that was quite public as well yeah how did you feel about that being so public was you happy for that to be known or not to be honest um no um it was something I'm grieving my daughter I'm like I'm literally in pits of grief then I'm experiencing, when I say a minority, it was a small minority. I've got such an incredible following oh, of, course, of yeah. like incredible people. So that small minority, I just feel like they need love and healing within themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that when mine and Ashley's relationship was breaking down, I was getting 
bullied and trolled for my appearance and people saying, oh, he's he's not with you now because of the way you look, no, is yeah. like the worst thing that you can actually sit there as a woman without going through everything that I've gone through. Yeah. So to get that abuse was just something that I was like, I had to gain another layer yeah. of strength um, to then announce the fact that me and Ashley were no longer together yeah. was down to the fact that somebody wanted to sell a story. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, th- it was only close friends and family mm-hmm. that knew that me and Ashley were no longer together. Mm-hmm. But we was trying to find a balance and a friendship again of through course. that time yeah. to still know how to be supportive with each other. How, how do you do this? We didn't know. We were figuring everything out ourselves. And the fact that we then got a call from our PR to say, um, guys, we didn't even tell our PR to actually say, guys, um, I really don't want to say this. I feel really uncomfortable to say this. Yeah. But um, we've had it leaked to the press that you and Ashley are now no longer together. Yeah. We had to obviously confirm it with our PR because she had to then go in the background and try and do some work. We had a month, a few weeks, probably less than a month, uh, where... Thankfully, we had the love from the press. Yeah. Where normally they would run a story. I'm sure you know that. Oh, yeah. They run a story <laughs> on you, yeah. whether you like it or whether you don't. The fact that they had respect yeah, that's for really us kind. Yeah. Um, to actually say, do you know what? Like, we want to give them, let them know that we know. Let them know that whoever this confirmed source was yeah. is going to every article to try and sell this story, which mm. I absolutely feel was disgusting. Yeah, um, came to the point where then me and Ashley, we wrote something, we both shared the same text, we put it out there, yeah. that we were no longer together. Yeah. And do you feel like, do you still have a nice relationship with Ashley? Because obviously you work together quite a lot. Like when you was talking about it, like you were saying like you always have that bond. Yeah. We have something... And have shared the same shoes that each other have. Now, whether that means that our relationship is an intimate relationship where we are partners um, or we have a friendship, we have merged in such a organic way where we hold love for one another. Yeah. Um, when you love somebody and you know that person has been through hell and back, you know that you'll always be beside them. Whether you like certain decisions that they make or not, it's about always having that love to know that we want to honour our daughter. Yeah. And how we do that is by co-parenting the Azalea Foundation. That's amazing. Mm. So I wanted to finish off on some of the amazing things you've done since Azalea passed. Because, you know, obviously I can see your necklace you're wearing. Mm. You showed me a hoodie as you got here. You were telling me some amazing things. So could you just tell everyone the amazing things you've been doing? Because every time I talk to you, you've got something new. Yeah, so, like, my um, my biggest thing... I think my biggest achievement was writing my book, Loving and Losing You, Azalea. Yeah. For me, and, like, if I recommend to anybody out there that wants to do something, like, pouring into writing something down or whatever, like, getting it all off your chest on your laptop, write notes, whatever it is. Yeah. I did that as I was going through hospital. Mm -hmm. It came to the point then where Penguin contacted me and asked me if I wanted to write a book. Yeah. And I just felt like it was law of attraction. I knew I wanted to do this. Yeah. I wrote a book, Love and News in New Azalea, which became bestseller. Mm-hmm. So, like, that was just phenomenal. Like, yeah. it just it blew me away because, I, again, I didn't think that it, it would ever, I'd ever be a bestseller. It wasn't my purpose. It was just kind of to help people. Yeah. Um, and then I've done, like, different collaborations with different brands where we've just raised incredible amounts of funds where um, that's been able to help children and families. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gosh, do you know, like when you put on the spot, I'm like, you've done amazing. Yeah, we've things. actually Every been time able to help. Um, we've been able to help individual cases, so individual children that have needed funding to go to different countries to have treatment that they've not had here yeah. in the UK. We've done. We've bought equipment for hospitals that have not able to be funded by our own government. We've now been able to source them, and now we're actually on an incredible journey where we're doing PhDs. So we're now funding. Um, 
people to go through their PhD programs mm -hmm. and that's just something because childhood cancer receives less than three percent of funding mm -hmm. the government can't fund education yeah. so we're now funding PhD so it allows people to go down the avenue of being able to advance childhood cancer yeah and our final one <laughs> we have just received news from Coventry University where myself and Ashley are going to get an honorary degree yeah and if you don't know what that was because I was just kind of a bit confused I was like oh my god she's just get reading it to me what it was. <laughs> I'm reading it to you because I'm like I need to understand yeah. it to tell someone else yeah is the fact that we've been doing such incredible work that we've been recognized now for the major impact that we've created through childhood cancer that we're now getting an honorary degree so all the teachers out there that told me <laughs> I wasn't going to make anything of myself yeah. like yeah my graduation is this Friday with Ashley so that is yeah, amazing so proud. that is so good so I wanted to ask you one thing so normally I end with like a question um and every time I sit with you, I feel like you're one of the most inspirational people I've ever met in my life. Aww. So I just wanted to ask, what message of love and inspiration would you give to people watching or listening? I would always say to follow your heart. And that's so cliche, and I never used to really get it before, because yeah. I used to think, oh, my heart's telling me a hundred things. Follow your heart, follow your purpose. And even if you've gone through so much, and it's made you a person like trolls, that have got bad energy, that, that have gone through things that have hurt them that have affected them that they feel like they want to radiate bad energy from I just believe that turn that pain into purpose and follow your heart and your own morals um, hold your own dignity and life will look clearer for you Thank you so much. Thank you so much for thank coming you, on Chloe. today. No, I've honestly, it's been a pleasure. And honestly, thank you for being so honest and open as well. Thank and you. I feel like as well, some of the things you spoke about, like I was worried about them being like triggering or anything. So nice. I just, I'm so grateful for your complete honesty and openness. Thank you for having me. That has been On The Record with Chloe B. Thank you to The Tooth Club UK for sponsoring this episode of On The Record with Chloe B. With thanks to Blank Box Studio for their amazing podcast space. If you are looking for anywhere in Essex or near to London where you want to do photo shoots or host your own podcast, make sure you drop them a message via social media. Please comment underneath who you would like to be our next guest and make sure you catch our next episode on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube.